All right, everybody, this is uh, right here on D-Wave Systems' own web page. Uh, the uh, link for this computing primer will be uh, listed down in the description below. Uh, section 2.3, right here, right out of the horse's mouth, quantum computers can learn. Here it goes on to say, the, dis the discipline of teaching computers to reason about the world and learn from experience is known as machine learning. It is a sub-branch of the field of artificial intelligence. Most of the code we write is fairly static. That is, given new data, it will perform the same computation over and over again and make the same errors. Using machine learning, we can design programs which modify their own code and therefore learn new ways to handle pieces of data they have never seen before. The type of applications that run very well on D-Wave's hardware are applications where learning and decision making under uncertain conditions are required. For example, imagine if a computer was asked to classify an object based on several images of similar objects you had shown it in the past. This task is very difficult for conventional computing architectures, which are designed to follow very strict logical reasoning. If the system is shown a new image, it is hard to get it to make a general statement about the image, such as it looks similar to an apple. D-Wave's processors are designed to support applications that require high-level reasoning and decision-making. How can we use a quantum computer to implement learning? For example, if we want the system to recognize objects. Well, writing an energy program for this task would be very difficult. Using even a quantum compiler, as we do not know in detail how to capture the essence of objects that the system must recognize. Luckily, there is a way around this problem, as there is a mode in which a quantum computer can tweak its own energy program in response to new pieces of incoming data. Right there. This allows the machine to make a good set a guess at what an object might be, even if it has never seen a particular instance of it before. Now, remember, seeing a piece of data doesn't necessarily mean images. It could be any kind of data. It could be voice data. It could be radio signatures. signatures could be um, longitude, latitude, latitude numbers. It could be all numbers of different types of data. So remember, we're not just talking about images here. Anything that can be in a data set. Anyway, following section gives an overview of the process. A computer that programs itself. In order to get the system to tweak its own energy program, you start by showing the system lots and lots of instances of the concept that you want it to learn about. What do you think they're doing right now, people? At first, the system chooses an energy program at random. It will get many of the labelings wrong, but that doesn't matter, as we can keep showing it the examples and each time allow it to tweak the energy program so that it gets more and more labels correct. Once it can't do any better on the data that it has been given, we then keep the final energy program and use that as our learned program to classify a new unseen example. Look at this, figure 13, teaching the quantum chip by allowing it to write its own energy program. The system tweaks the energy program until it labels all the examples that you show it correctly. This is also known as the training or learning phase. Um, and I digress. In machines learning terminology, in machine learning terminology, this is known as a supervised learning algorithm because we are showing the computer examples of images and telling it what the correct label should be in order to help it learn. There are other types of learning algorithms supported by the system, even ones that can be used if labeled data is not available. Oh. And then the uncertainty principle. Another interesting point to note about the quantum computer is that it is probabilistic, meaning that it returns multiple answers. Some of these might be the answer that you're looking for, and some might not. At first, it sounds like a bad thing, as a computer that returns a different answer when you ask it the same question sounds like a bug. However, in the quantum computer, this returning of multiple answers can give us important information about the confidence level of the computer. Using the fruit example, we, if we showed the computer an image and asked it to label the image 100 times and it gave the answer apple 100 times, then the computer is pretty confident that the image is an apple. However, if it returned the answer apple 50 times and raspberry 50 times, what this means is that the computer is uncertain about the image you are showing it. And if you had shown it in an image with apples and raspberries in it, it would be perfectly correct. 
This uncertainty can be very powerful when you are designing systems which are able to make complex decisions and learn about the world. Are you finally hearing me on this now? Come on. What do you think they're doing right now, people? What do you think they're doing right now? They are trying to get as much data about everything as they possibly can in a short amount of time to feed the system in order for it to learn. I'll leave a link for this. Um, I just thought you might want to see it. This is kind of important and is part of a, a bigger study I'm working on at the moment, so stand by for that video. All right, guys, yeah. Okay, uh, here's the uh, list of customers on the D-Wave website. Uh, so we got Lockheed Martin. Now, I earlier said that the NSA were one of the customers. Um, I thought I saw it in the tech notes. It was just my eyes. Uh, it was NASA again. Uh, but the NSA, believe it or not, are, are actually building one. There's uh, another article regarding that in Wired Magazine. Um, but, yeah, so we got Lockheed Martin, of course. Uh, what are they known for? They're known for, well, basically jet fighter and uh, avionics, AI, targeting systems, tracking, you know, all kinds of things that require, you know, millisecond, micro nanosecond decision making. Anyway, uh, that said, um, yeah, so we got that aspect covered right there. Avionics, big, big deal. Uh, Quail, the Quantum Artificial Intelligence Lab, which uh, that's a Google, NASA, USRA collaboration. Uh, that's the uh, USRA, uh, Uni University Space Research Association. And uh, of course, that's at the Ames Research Center. There's all kinds of press coverage here you can read up on. Now, the USC Lockheed Martin Quantum Computation Center at University of Southern Cali. Um, yeah, we got uh, them as a customer. And here's all kinds of information of where they've been installed, uh, the lab teams. There's all kinds of related links. I'm not going to go into too many details, but these things are already, are already out there. Google, NASA, they've joined forces with theirs. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, more to come in the next bit. Okay. While I was just cruising around, I thought about uh, closing out this video with a point. And as I was doing so, I found this other video done by Level 9 News. Um, I'm not subscribed to her, but uh, like what I saw in this video, so I'll give her a shot and uh, see what she has to say. Um, but in this particular video, she goes on about Jame, Jade Helm 15 being an AI software program. I know it's been on the discussion table for quite a while now. Um, but there are definitely some links. She uh, mentions a, a company in here called uh, uh, Raytheon which uh, right here, um, some interesting facts about them. Uh, the page has changed, the one that she links to. Uh, it doesn't say what it says in the video. Um, some more about their technologies include call center analytics, shooter detection for helicopters, shooter detection for vehicles in fixed positions, shooter detection for dismounted troops, automated monitoring and translation of foreign news broadcasts, communications, portable real-time two-way translation, on-the-fly language translation, automated monitoring and translation of foreign language websites, multifunction Android situation awareness device. This is going to be very important. Okay, passive infrared image capture device, unattended video ground sensors. That is also gonna be very important. Okay, 
Um, BBN's uh, research and development expertise spans the following domains, big data, cloud computing, cybersecurity, distributed systems, immersive learning, networking and communication, quantum physics, sensor systems, speech language and multimedia technologies, and synthetic biology tools. This is going to be important. Yeah, I bet that's going to be important. All right. Well, I'd like to uh, thank Level 9 News for, uh, for that little bit of information there. She does mention um, the expertise spans go into quantum physics, networking communications, immersive learning. It didn't say who in, or what was doing the learning. Um, distributed systems, cloud computing, big data, um, and sensor systems. Sensor systems. What other kinds of sensor systems could they possibly want that they don't have already? I'm guessing some kind of like atmospheric based like detection grid let them uh, vision things in 3D or visualize things in 3D anyway that's you know that's neither here nor there but anyway this led me down the little rabbit trail of, of Raytheon because this is what their big deal is and so I did a little bit of searching um, found that Raytheon was basically uh, another, uh, you know, they, they're, they're at war, by the way, with Lockheed Martin for um, the, uh, what do you call it here? Do, 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 do. The J-Stars. Guess what J-Stars is? It's basically the, uh, the joint surveillance targeting and attack radar system and it's basically a command and control air airplane uh, or air jet or, or sorry jet plane uh, this thing would tie in basically all information uh, networked and distributed to it and uh, relay orders you know and uh, that's what it's used for so you got apparently we got Lockheed Martin um, working with uh, Raytheon uh, recently um, but the co competitions opened up and guess look at the date guys June 17th this is less than a month less than a month before this big exercise in AI and if you think that it's just gonna be a bunch of guys on the ground and a few helicopters and uh, and some internet uh, outages and some rolling blackouts if that's all you think it is um don't forget about our uh upper uh you know up, upper atmosphere i mean geez uh they're gonna have every tool that they have up there up to a mile high like, like air, up in the air they're gonna be coordinating everything down here and they're gonna be testing all these systems that uh are going to work like i don't know in harmony with this ai system Anyway, um, also I was kind of uh, kind of bouncing around, and I found I don't know a little bit of a bio on D Wave Systems, which, by the way, is a British Columbia-based company. It's Canadian, and found out that the company had been funded by Draper Fisher Jurvetson, GrowthWorks Capital, the Business Development Bank of Canada, and the British Columbia Investment Management Corporation. But uh, Draper Fisher Jurbitson, I just decided to do a little bit of a, a search, trusting that uh, Wikipedia would give me something to work with. And here they are. Of course, the article always has multiple issues. Um, needs additional citations for verification. Article contains content that is written like an advertisement. Okay, sure enough. What if it is? doesn't matter if it's an advertisement for the company they went and showed uh, who they who they've invested in now look at some of these Baidu, Skype Solar City Tesla Motors Tumblr Twitter Yammer I'm not familiar with these other companies uh, Avant yeah they do uh, they do a, f a free uh, uh, Avant 
yeah, the Vaunt, they do a virus program, if I'm not mistaken, that's open. Anyway, one of the big or bigger ones is SpaceX down here. Now, I went and compared a bunch of these together to look for uh, similarities and ownerships, and I came up with this when I found SpaceX. First off, they signed a large development contract with NASA, and guess what? In January 2015, that's this year, SpaceX raised a billion dollars in funding from Google and Fidelity. And guess what? They joined the investorship group of Draper Fisher Jurvetson. So the very same company that funded the company that created the D-Wave processor is supplying it to one of the people on the board with Draper Fisher Jurvetson. So basically, it's, it sounds like a little bit of insider... Uh, um, I don't know what you call it, <laughs> but uh, something's going in on the inside here for sure. Anyway, I just thought I'd kind of throw that in there. It's not necessarily uh, relevant, but uh, it's some information. Uh, I'm going to go down further, further down this rabbit hole and see where it takes me. Anyway, guys, um, that's what I have for you at the moment. Uh, stand by for more. All right, yeah, and so here's the bit about the uh, the NSA building a quantum computer. We already knew that. It's a Wired article, um, basically just reposting stuff that was already stated, I think, in the Washington Post. Uh, and, of course, uh, yeah, it was an Edward Snowden leak. But apparently at this point now it's been confirmed. Uh, do, 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 do. I think we can... I think we can see clearly out three to five years beyond that. Things like quantum computers start to bump up there. Blah, 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 blah. Um, there's a bunch of hubbub there. But anyway, uh, what could the NSA do with this tech? Well, that's what my next video that I'm in the process of making is about. So stand by. I'll give you guys a brief rundown of what quantum computers are capable of on an information level. But more so, what is that stake and what could be happening uh, there's a lot of things that kind of tie in together um, I could be out of my mind but uh, stand by uh, this is going to be uh, this is going to be a good little rip all right guys we'll see you later take care of yourselves and for God's sake take care of each other all right peace <laughs>